Hey guys, Jerry here, and welcome back once more to Greg Tech. As you can see, I have briefly uh, rearranged the pipe up here a bit, and I have added a couple more tanks. Because I figured it wouldn't make a lot of sense that I could see the uh, the level from up here, so... More tanks, yay! Uh, this, of course, also means that um, I have a more room for storage of the creosote oil. Now, that nasty noise you hear in the background, that is the plate bending machine here making red alloy plates uh, for us. I've started up pretty much all the generators here because we need a lot of power to make uh, these plates. Um, and we really do need the plates if we want to make more machines. So that's pretty much it. Like without red alloy plates you can't make electronic circuits and without electronic circuits you can't make pretty much everything. So yeah, that's there's that. Um, so that's gonna be going on for a while now. I'm pumping just a bit more into the machine there. But uh, let us go on with the plan that we made last time. We are gonna dig down underneath, we're gonna figure out where exactly this tank is, and then we're gonna hook it up to the um, coke oven here directly. So, if we start by going down here in my little basement here, you can see that the cook oven middle should be right there. That's a cook oven. And if we then dig in toward the house this way, we find my mine shaft. Now, this is kind of unavoidable that we get the pipe visible here. Um, I think. Yeah, we're gonna have to put the pipe like right, right about there. So if we dig in here. Alright, that's where the pipe's going. So the pipe is going right there. I don't think I can make that jump. Uh, let us instead do this and dig. Now, um, the house itself. We are actually directly underneath it. Um, if we look up here, you can see that the the place we actually want to be right underneath is this bit right right here. So we need to dig in this way and then run the pipe along here. Now, the big question of course is just how far do we need to dig? And that is a really good question. In order to answer that, um, we need to get here. And I need some light. Um, basically, I think we're gonna go inside the house again and dig out the block underneath because then we can see through the floor exactly where we need to be. So, in here, put a little block so I can jump on that. And those planks. Alright, that's done. So now we just need to figure out exactly where that one block of planks is. And I can tell for a fact that it's further on than we are right now. There we go. Right there. We found it. Alright, so the pipe needs to go right here. So let's get our stone fruit pipes and start putting them in. Go along here. Cross over there. I'm, I'm stuck now. Get rid of that. And then we just need to get back in there. Which apparently is no easy feat. There, there. Um... There is gravel on, um, above this cobblestone here, so we can't really mess with that. And I can tell for a fact that we are gonna be just a couple of pipes short in order to make this. We need the engine there. We need a lever right there, so pipes there. And we we're exactly two bits of pipes short. Um, this should be easy to fix because we do have extra waterproofing sealant, whatever. Uh, do we also have extra glass? That's the question. Yes, we do. Do we have more stone? Yes, we do. Alright, no issues at all. There we go. Should be more than enough. I f think I hear that the machines up here have stopped. Are you done or are you just out of power? You're out of power. Alright, 
Let's give it a couple more buckets. Um, hopefully that'll bring it through. Do we have any fuel on us right now? No, we have one plank. I have one floor plank. That'll be fine. Uh, the thing can only contain like 10 buckets at a time, so it's... The internal capacity is not that great. Uh, this way, this way. Bam. And... Bam. And redstone engine goes up there. Then we need the lever, which I have not made. Why have I not made a lever? <laughs> Silly. Silly goose. I should have some... There we go. Might as well make it as easy as possible. And then finally, we can get this show on the road. There we go. Now, of course, uh, this tunnel here is not really necessary anymore. Um, we do need to light it up just so we don't end up having uh, stuff spawning in there. But apart from that, we don't really need it. So I'm also going to put a torch in there and then we're going to block that off so we only have the little gap visible there. Perfect. Now, the engine over here by the coke oven, we might as well keep on constantly because we don't really want to keep oil inside the oven. We want to use it. Um, or at the very least, we want to transfer it to our um, internal storage here. Which should start rising any moment now. Ooh, chicken egg. But yeah, that's done. That's a good step. Yeah, there we go. Now it's rising. So yeah, uh, this also means that we can take all this excess coal that I have. All this lovely excess coal. And actually stuff into this thing. There we go. Make all the stuff. We can also use it to make charcoal um, out of the logs. And that also gives uh, creosote oil. So um, overall... Making all our fuel in that thing is going to be is more efficient than making it in furnaces and such. So, if possible, I much prefer to make it in the machine, uh, the, the coke oven. Now, of course, we are out of power once again. But yeah, I think we can just keep this run running for a bit now. Again, it's it's a matter of um, using the resources we have available to us. And right now, creosote oil is something that is pretty much just a waste of our time if we don't do anything with it. Um, it's pretty good for making torches, granted. I'll give it that. Um, but it's also pretty nifty for making power when you have nothing else. And besides, it's a byproduct of refining our coal to make it more efficient anyway. So overall, our... Um, if we factor in the the half bucket of um, creosote you get for each bit of cold coke, you get like um, nine and a half thousand EU out of every single piece of coal this way, rather than just um, the uh, uh, the the couple of bits you get from the the four thousand from burning the coal directly. So yeah, that's a gain of over a hundred percent. Now. The next issue, issue, that's one way to put it, uh, the next challenge we face, maybe it's better, um, is that we have the bees set up and I kind of want to uh, go a bit away from uh, Greg Tech just for a moment to look a bit more at the bees and that means we need some machines. Now bees, um, the way that you extract stuff from the, uh, the combs is using a centrifuge and like pretty much all forestry machines, they require a lot of bronze. This one requires 30 casing, which is 8 bronze ingots, 2 glass and 6 copper, which is something that we have a plenty. Let's see, 8 bronze, 6 copper and some glass. We have all that right here. So, 1 sturdy casing, uh, clean that, put that there, copper ingots there and glass in the middle one centrifuge now the centrifuge is one of the most power hungry forestry machines there are it uses four um, mega joules per tick which is quite a bit and I think it's actually more than any of the uh, current buildcraft engines we have can provide 
Um, if we just quickly look at engine here. Let's see, we have the hobby steam engine, which is the tiny, tiny one, 2 megajoules per tick. We have the commercial steam engine, which is the smallest one, I think, that actually requires steam. That's 4 megajoules per tick. Um, industrial is the even bigger one. Then we have all the forestry ones. We have the electrical engine, which I think produces depending on what circuitry you put in it. There's the peat fire, there's the biogas, clockwork, redstone, sterling engine combustion engine and they all produce different amounts um, you can actually see that on the fuels here exactly how much has been produced uh, like if we hover over the that's fuel 6 megajoules per tick for uh, 25,000 ticks on a combustion engine so that's a lot and then you have something like uh, let's see biomass 5 megajoules per tick for 2,500 ticks in a biogas engine that's pretty good as well but then if you look in something like milk or water, you can see one megajoule per tick in a biogas engine. That's not a lot. So some of these have efficiency depending on the fuel that you put in. The clockwork engine, of course, uh, efficiency depends on how much you spam right-click it. Um, but I think what we want to go with is the commercial steam engine here. Iron plates, iron gears, piston glass. And we do have access to steam, and that's the beauty of this. Um, so let's actually have a look and see if we can make some iron gears quickly. We need some sticks because um, buildcraft gears they start as wooden gears. They are then upgraded to cobblestone gears, uh, which can then be upgraded to iron gears with some iron. Buildcraft, of course, is a much different mod than Greg Tech. Um, so. I'm somewhat hesitant to use these um, all these machines interchangeably, but on the other hand, um, they do allow for um, some fun stuff to happen in cooperation with each other. And I kind of, I kind of, I, I appreciate that. We need a piston. Let's get the, that recipe baseline set up here. Uh, oh, actually, we do need the piston there. Then we had the iron gears right there. And finally, we had some iron plates up here. Commercial steam engine. This is a railcraft engine. Railcraft, of course, starting out as a... Um, shall we call it a an add-on? I think, yeah, an add-on an add to, um, uh, to buildcraft. So, they are kind of related here. Um, so, we got these pipes here, which we are actually making steam in. So, that's... Perfectly normal steam, so we should be able to put this one there. Um, put the centrifuge. I'm gonna put it right there on top of it, and then we need to get our wrench because we need to turn that engine. It's facing the wrong way. So there we go, turned. All right, now we just need to add some steam to this, and that of course means getting some fuel, putting it in the steam furnace that we have down here. And hopefully that should work. We got some cold coke here. Beautiful stuff. I love it. Some of that in there. Get that heating up nice and nice and warm. We don't need to make more stone. We have plenty of stone in here. And then we need to go and grab some uh, bee combs. So or some honeycombs. But for that, I actually want to sleep first because. It's not outside, and I really don't want to aggro a bunch of stuff and get our bees blown up by creepers and whatnot. So let's jump over here. I have been, like, uh, re-breeding the bees. So they have managed to produce quite a bit. It, it's taken several lives for them to provi provide this much honey. Um, yeah, look at all the zombies. So tired of that shit. We need, we need a wall. I'm gonna build a wall at some point. Um, but yeah, the steam engine here, it should also be needing a redstone signal. So I'm gonna have to attach one of those to it. But for now, let's put in the honeycombs in the centrifuge. And then we can, I think we should have the materials on us to make one of these. We can put a block of wood above it, I think, if we can somehow get up there. 
and give it a redstone signal like this. And that means it starts taking in steam from the pipes. And it should... Once the steam builds up, it should... Uh, and the engine heats up, of course. It should start providing a lot of power. And that should allow our centrifuge to work and actually refine all the honeycombs here. Now, I did try um, with the whole tank thing to store some steam, and it just didn't work. It really didn't work. But as you can see, the engine here is actually working, and it is producing quite a bit of uh, Minecraft jewels here. I don't know why I keep... I, I keep saying Mega Jewels, because that's the... Um, of course, the real-world equivalent of the MJ, what it means in real life. And because I'm an engineer, it falls. It comes naturally to me to say that, rather than Minecraft Jewel. But, for reference, it is a Minecraft Jewel. So yeah, we... Steam has a lot of pur a lot of multiple purposes here, and one of them being Railcraft, of course, because... Thanks to the Forge um, Fluid Registry, um, they're interchangeable, completely interchangeable. And that means we can use the lovely Greg Tech Steam here to make... Um, we can use Greg Tech Steam through Greg Tech Pipes to power a Railcraft engine to make forestry items. To power a forestry machine that makes forestry items. Uh, we can even take it one step further by using these mundane cooms which come from Magic Beasts, so we can use Greg Tech um, machines to make Greg Tech, to make steam, to go through Greg Tech Pipes, to a Railcraft engine, to a forestry machine, to a Magic Beast item. Mods working together in beautiful harmony. Gotta love it. So, and uh, there's that. We got the centrifuge working now and it's working beautifully. It's actually, I'm actually really surprised how well this works. I must, be, I must admit. I'm not at all dissatisfied with it. Don't get that wrong. I, I love that it actually worked. Um, but it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's fun. It is fun. To have the mods working together like this. That's also a big reason why I chose the specific mods that I did, because they actually do work together, and they work well together. Alright, let's get some more steel going here, because we need all the steel in the world. Now, how much of this Invar stuff did I actually manage to craft? 18 ingots. We need at the very least four of them to make the alloy furnace that I was mentioning earlier. Alloy smelter, four Invar plates, and then we need a Kubro nickel heating coil, and that means we need a wire mill. Ah, <sighs> wire mill. Wire. That's very well spelled there, Jerry. Uh, automatic wire mill. Brass plates. Steel machine hull. Diamond. Integrated circuits. Conveyor modules. Brass. We need brass. Um, and that means we need to make brass ingots, and that means we need sink and copper. Three copper and one sink. Do we actually have any sink at all? Oh, we we actually got brass directly, uh, thanks to that village we looted. Um, so we need four brass plates, and if the machine up here is ready, near enough, we need some we need some more power here. Yeah, I, I didn't bring any other fuel, so the creosote oil here will have will have to do the trick. So let's get this. Machine started up again. Come on. Come on. Pump faster. There we go. That should give power in the bat box, which powers the plate bending machine, which is nearly done. So once this one is done, we can put in the uh, brass ingots to make brass plates. That should hopefully be a lot cheaper. Uh, if we just look at the... Not the alloy smelter. Plate bending machine, yeah, 3000 EU per stick. Or a piece. That is a lot cheaper. Compared to the 21,000 something for the red alloy plates. These guys are expensive. And I'm really looking forward to being able to make electronic circuits a cheaper way than this. If there is a way. I remember that last time I played, you were able to, instead of um, redstone... Like, they used redstone back then. Instead of redstone, you were able to use um, something called electrum. 
which would be a lot more efficient. But let's just have a look here quickly and see. Uh, circuit. Recipe. There is the assembly machine here, which can basic circuit board, free copper cables, assembling machine, which can be made by... Yeah, this is not cheaper. Just want to say here, yeah, okay, okay, you can actually use Electrum. There is a way to use Electrum to make basic circuit boards, and you can make them at twice the efficiency. But you do need the assembling machine, which is like an automatic crafting tape thing. Um, let's, search, let's have a search for ass here and see if we can actually find the assembling machine. Avengers assemble! Steel plates, uh, a lot of circuits, a sticky piston or a piston. Yeah, we, we could make this. That's another machine that we can make pretty easily. We just need, again, um, to do a lot of stuff. Like, we need a lot of um, these red alloy plates. We need a lot of copper cables. We're going to need a lot of other s random stuff. Right now, copper cables are in high demand. Let's get some rubber on these guys. Rub, rub. There we go. Make as many of these as we can. Five. And, yeah. Again, it's it's a bit tricky figuring out, out exactly which one you want to make. Um, to be honest, now that I've seen the assembly machine, I actually want to make that first. Because if we can, like we can, we don't have silver. We have a bit of silver, which means we could use a bit of silver to make a bit of electrum, which means that we could make at least some um, electronic circuits using a cheaper recipe. So I think that's worth pursuing. Like again, it's a matter of constantly trying to to improve your own situation, make it better for yourself, um, make it cheaper. So that's really what I'm trying to achieve here. Uh, I should have saved the conveyor module recipe here. See, there, there, there. Glass up there. And then we need iron plates in the middle here. And I'm out of iron plates. You know what, guys? Uh, this is dragging on a bit. Like, there's so much stuff to do. Um, so many things that... Um, can't go wrong but have to be done and using time and resources and material and I feel that we could benefit from me taking a quick break and then returning later on uh, once I have a bit more prepared for you guys so with that I think I'm gonna end this episode next episode we're gonna get right on the assembling machine and hopefully we can use that to save ourselves a bunch of materials again making all these little electronic components rather than having to craft them all by hand and fail it not failing at it but um, having to repeat ourselves a bunch of times as you can see now I'm already a uh, circuit short so that means more red alloy means more plate bending um, you get the idea I'll see you next time bye